All right, praise the Lord. We're here for another teaching, and I need you to stay with me on this one, uh, especially you husbands and the woman out there too that might not have husbands. But uh, you got to get your house in order. Uh, I went kicking and screaming after I heard this teaching, but when we put the Bible verses in order, uh, you're going to see very clearly that makeup is sinful and that vanity equals an eternal hellfire. Amen? So stay with me, please. You want to come back and forth and you want to uh, contend for the faith? We'll do that. But come down with Scripture. Tell me what Scriptures I got wrong when we go through this. All right? It's a very important subject. Uh, we know that women's heads are supposed to be covered. Amen. We'll have that teaching below. But we're not talking about that today. We're just talking about physical makeup that a woman or a man puts on their face. We're predominantly, of course, talking about women. Puts on their face to make themselves look more attractive. It's the only reason you put on makeup, correct? You're making yourself more attractive. Praise the Lord. And that is sinful. And we're going to prove it here. I need you to stay with me. Though. Don't turn this off. Okay, now the Bible commands us, Jesus the Lord, from the Holy Bible, 66 books, all throughout, he commands us to be holy, to live holy, to live perfect, amen, to obey him. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. We can all agree with that, amen? But he commands you to walk just like he walked. I use this in almost every one of my studies, 1 John 2, 6. He that says he abides in him also himself to walk just as Jesus walked. Even as he has walked. 1 John 2, 6. So we can come to an agreement there. Amen? We need to walk as Jesus walked. Praise the Lord. 1 John 2, 6. Remember, Isaiah 53, verse 2 and 3. Listen. For he, Jesus. Now, Isaiah 53 is a clear prophecy about Jesus. Amen? From the Old Testament. 53, of Isaiah 53, we're just going to go verse 2 and 3 to see what Jesus looked like. Now, he is the God of all creation. He could have came down as some cool-looking hipster. Hey, what's up? Amen? Like the churches are today, fist bumping and bop bop beep bop bop No, 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 no. He could have came back as some most beautiful, you know, he could have uh, made himself into the most beautiful person, aesthetically beautiful. Listen closely. For he, verse 2, Jesus of Isaiah 53, shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, no beauty. And it's going to prove this. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. There is no beauty in Jesus that we shall desire him. This is talking about the physical look of Jesus. It's not that blasphemous, blue-eyed, long hair, which is an abomination to Jesus, long hair for a man. Blue-eyed, long-haired Catholic freak, the white boy that is depicted all over the uh, uh, world, all over the movies, quote movies, these blasphemous movies about Jesus. That's not Jesus. Man, he was Middle Eastern. He was darker skinned. Darker than the white you think he is. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Do you understand what that means? He is despised. He is rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Are you obeying John 126? Or do you put on a form of comeliness, of beauty, that people should desire you. I've got to make myself up. you got to hear this message today. Don't go kicking because you're going to go straight to hell. Listen, we must follow his steps. We just know that, right? We're going to continue to show the example he made. Women are never to make themselves look more attractive with revealing clothes, makeup, etc. Woman, neck, 
to ankles. We're not going to get into that today. The modesty video is coming. We have plenty hours of teaching on that. You let culture dictate your Christianity when the Bible tells you completely opposite. We must follow in his steps, says it, 1 John 2, 6, but listen to 1 Peter 2, 21. For even here unto you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Are you walking as he walked? Are you following his steps? Or are you putting the mascara on and the blush and everything else and blah, blah, bling and the gold and the jewelry? Keep kicking. We're going to continue. And just stay with me another 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because we're going to go through a conversation between two women that's so blessed. One asks the other is make up a sin. It's so blessed. It's going to bless you. Stay with me. Don't go kicking. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 5. Let the Lord speak to you through the scripture. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 5. And tell me if you want in the down below. Where am I wrong? Where are the scriptures wrong? First Peter 4, 1 through 5. For as much as in Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Do you know vanity is a sin? Putting makeup on is vanity. You must have ceased from sin to be with Christ that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men. Woman, do you not know that men lust after you when you beautify yourself? Now you can't help your natural beauty, but if you're trying to beautify yourself above the neck, don't use the straw man. And if you're trying to beautify yourself, above your natural beauty, you're helping that man to stumble and you'll end up in hell with them. Men lust after made-up woman. The only reason to make yourself up is to look more attractive. For whom? The wall? Oh no, the people at work. The clients. Whomever. Are you that vain to think it's not sinful? Should live the rest of time to the lust of men? No, but to the will of God. Verse 3 of 1 Peter 4 says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When past, before we walked in lasciviousness, which is lewdness and impurity, lusts, excess of wine, revilings, banquetings, partying, going out to parties, etc. And abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. But most of you do. I look at these professing Christians all over social media, all over the world. I used to go to all the tons of churches. And you can't tell the difference between you and a woman on the street that proclaims she's a devil worshiper. Or one that proclaims not Jesus. You trample his blood. Speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Read it. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 5. Are you sacrificing or living wicked just like the world? Are your clothes different? Is your conversation different? That includes your whole being, including your words. Are you peculiar, separate from the world, as commanded, or do you look just like the world? Oh, most all of you do. You're going to try to think of excuses. Too bad. The Bible does not lie. I pray you repent. Romans 12, 1, 2. Listen closely. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are you conformed to this world? Are you making yourself up to be more accepted by the world? 
Man, Lord have mercy. Ask you a question. Is there a good reason why makeup should be put on in light of all the scriptures I've already given you? Why? Why? Other than vanity. Other than to make yourself look more attractive to the flesh of men. Or well, women in that matter. There's so many lesbians these days. How is it necessary, necessary or edifying unless you have carnal values that twist your definition of necessary and edifying? Listen closely. Woman, wives, Titus 2.5, listen closely. You are to be discreet. You are to be chaste. Keepers at home, good, obedient to your own husbands. That the word of God not be blasphemed. Keep on putting on that lipstick. Keep on putting on that foundation, makeup, and everything else. You blaspheme the word of God. What promotes being discreet or chaste as commanded in the Bible? Does makeup not do just the opposite? Of course it does. Well, Everybody usually starts at these verses I go, uh, I'm going to go to now, but I decided to wait till the middle here. We went through very carefully how you're supposed to walk as Jesus walked. We went through very closely how you um, have to be holy and blameless and a living sacrifice for the Lord. How you have to get away from that vanity. Amen? To be discreet and chaste. Now, we're going to show you the woman that used that makeup like you are. To look more attractive. Jezebel knew what makeup was all about. Well, who doesn't? Any fool knows that makeup is vanity. Jezebel knew. And so do you. But you're going to deny it. You're going to try to twist the scripture. It ain't going to work on judgment day. How are you a living sacrifice? Or are you just one of those that profess to know Christ with your lips. But your heart is far from him. And I want to make something clear here. God is talking about someone's mother here. Some people say, you can't talk about my mother like that. You can't talk about my... God is talking to mothers here. Listen. 2 Kings 9.22 And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu. And he said, it is peace, Jehu? And he answered, what peace? So as long as the whoredoms of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many. Whoa! He just called this mother a whore. Whoa! Bible is truth. Truth wounds, but the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. Proverbs says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy, those, those comforting people, those, oh, I love everyone people, they're lying to you. They won't tell you the truth in the Bible, amen? Thy mother Jezebel, the whore, and her witchcraft are many. What did she do? 2 Kings 9.30. Take your Bible out. 2 Kings 9.30. And when Jehu was coming to Jezebel, Jezebel heard of it and painted her face. Put on that makeup. And tied her head, did her hair up beautifully, and looked out a window. We know what happened to Jezebel. The dogs ended up eating her after they killed her justly. That was a just killing, amen? She's a wicked woman. But what did she do? She used makeup to try to get out of it, try to seduce the man. No one in the Bible ever looked like the whore Jezebel with makeup. No, no godly saint. Now listen, this is anguish over Judah's desolation. The, amazing, they use makeup. The Lord uses makeup as an example of his displeasure with their sin. Listen. Listen to the prophet's warning here. Listen. Are you, the question is, are you going to heed this woman and rip that makeup on your face never to use it again? Or are you going to try to compromise? Oh, this one does it, that one does it. Oh, this can't be true. Oh, it is. I rebuke you in Jesus' name if you become stiff-necked and the rebuke's coming at the end. Are you going to heat? I pray you do. Jeremiah 4, and you men too that allow your wives, or at least don't tell them, because they don't have to obey you if they're heathen, but you got to tell them. 
Listen to the cry. Jeremiah 4.19, then we'll jump down to 4.30. But listen, my bowels, my bowels. This is the prophet speaking, God speaking through him. I am pained at the walls of my heart. Make a noise for me, does my heart. I am not silent. For my voice of a trumpet I have heard, O oh, my soul, a shout of battle. Verse 30 in Jeremiah 4. And when thou art spoiled, what will you do? Though thou clothe thyself with crimson, meaning fancy clothes. Huh? We'll get to that some other time. Next, next video. Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, gold and other fancy jewelry, ornaments. You wear a simple wedding ring, you can get them for $10 online, praise the Lord. God forbid you spend a lot of money on something like that when 21,000 children are dying every day. Let me not digress. And you deck yourself with ornaments of gold and jewelry. Though thou rentest thy faith with painting, with makeup, in vain shall thou make yourself fair. You're just fooling yourself. Thy lovers will despise ye and seek your life. The people that do not tell you the truth are seeking your life. The devil's using them. Oh, don't listen to this guy. He's crazy. Oh, those verses don't mean this. Prove it. Prove where it says you can make yourself more attractive to the lusts of men. Go ahead. Let me show you what a humble, godly response is to a seeker of God on the subject of makeup. Because a lot of you people out there, ah, you're boiling. I can I can. See. You know, I, 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 I can't see you. I can, I've seen other people. Oh, they get boil. They boil over this. Oh no, not makeup! Don't take that away. I'm gonna cover my head. Cover my head. Recently, now listen very closely. This is what. It, this is how you should act. This is a back and forth from one woman to another. It's, it's just beautiful. Woman number one says, recently I had a woman ask me if wearing makeup is sin. Thought to share my response that edification may be had. Praise the Lord. Here we are. Quote, I am glad you are sincerely seeking to know God's mind in this matter and that you want to do what pleases him in light of God's purpose for us in this life and the wickedness of our times. I see wearing makeup as pure vanity, which is, of course, the sin, unprofitable and a waste of precious time and resources as I recently mentioned on someone's post. Wow, time and resources too. This is so true. It doesn't redeem the time. And aren't we supposed to take care of the least of these? Listen to her. One dollar goes a long way in countries, this really hit me, where people have no choice but to live off very little food and drink and disease-infested water. Starvation and the water crisis are solvable issues that this selfish, the selfish generation fails to solve due to its multitude of personal daily choices made. People using their time and resources for unnecessary and thus unprofitable things like makeup. Having said this, I do not want to promote a... I do not want to promote a careful and troubled spirit about every dollar we spend, but rather an honest self-examination, prayer, consideration of how to profit God's kingdom with what he has given us. Are you prayerfully considering that? That's a powerful statement. She goes on. Society creates false fears, anxieties, and unnecessary concerns for how people appear. A godless society puts false burdens, especially on the heart of women, to have specific chest size, waist measurement, bottom shape, long, thick, dark eyelashes, big, juicy lips, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on when we look in the mirror and do not see ourselves lining up the way we... Uh, and then it makes us feel of less value, etc. The image of ideal woman and men are ingrained in our minds and affect our thinking. As you say, as if it is not good or a problem that you have, quote, blonde, almost clear eyelashes and fair skin. God has created an array of colors, shapes and sizes we need not to despise or feel insecure or ashamed for what he has given us. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Our focus in this life should not be on our looks. Do you know how much women spend on hair color just every year? Billions of dollars while 21,000 children under the age of five years old die every day from poverty. 
Shame on you. This isn't about hair color, but shame on you. When we are busy in the Lord's business, we have less time and desire to even give place to those kind of thoughts. You shouldn't be thinking of your hair, your eyeliner, your, your lipstick. Are you crazy? My Lord, have mercy on your wretched soul. The snare of living in a land where there is fullness of bread and too many mirrors. We think too much about minor physical details of our appearance. That's the end of her response to somebody asking her, another woman asking her, is it a sin to wear makeup? Listen to this woman who is truly seeking God's response. Is this your response? She says, so this was her glorious response. Hallelujah. End quote of the first woman. We're going to start quote of woman number two. The one that initially asked, is it a sin? Thank you for responding. The precious Lord Jesus revealed himself to me this morning through scripture. Hallelujah. Isaiah 50 through t uh, 53 2. He, Jesus, had no form or comeliness. We started with that. Comeliness means the quality of being good looking or attractive. Did you hear that? The quality of being good looking or attractive. Are you walking like Jesus? 1 John 2 6. Isaiah 53 3 says, And when we shall see him, see Jesus, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You're trying to beautify yourself because if you are, men are desiring you even more. Nasty, nasty. All you people did. Oh, man, it's nasty. I learned that Jesus himself did not draw our attention to his flesh. as the woman continuing. He was not sensual. He did not appeal to the world or fashion himself in any way to be desired physically. Though he is God, he denied himself in every way and chose to have a physical appearance that is not desirable through the world's eyes. He as God could have chosen any form of flesh that he wanted as he chose to have a humble, simple appearance. This really opened my eyes. There's a humble heart. This convicted me of all the times I have sought to be, quote, above my master and all the times I have lifted up in pride over admiring my own appearance while Christ chose to forsake his. I want to be like Christ. I want to look like him, talk like him. And when others see me, I want them to see Christ and know that I belong to him. I should not find the world attractive. Likewise, the world should not find me attractive. We should have nothing in common. I will continue looking to Jesus to guide me in these areas. I am thankful for the change of heart he has given me, given me already. I agree with you. For me, personally, I have spent way too much mo time and money investing in things that are vain and superficial. I want to please the Lord. I want to invest in His kingdom and do His work, His will and not mine. I choose to die. Die to self. Thanks for taking the time to respond. Lord bless you. End quote. Is that you? I pray it is. Most of you are going to be furious at this point. And God's going to cast you straight into hell because you won't give up that hair coloring and that makeup and that jewelry. Man, you're going to get, you won't cover yourself properly with long skirts and, and proper dress. You'll have the low cut tops and the shoulders showing and you'll go straight to hell. You're called to repentance today. Listen, God is good and those who seek him with sincerity and truth and knowledge will be added to him. To live is for Christ and to die is gain. To them that glory, let him glory in him alone and not in appearance, strength or riches. Jeremiah 9.23 says, Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in earth. For these things I delight, saith the Lord. Take off that war paint. Whores use makeup. Jezebel uses makeup. You need to stop. You know the truth now. Will you keep rebelling? 
Because you're in witchcraft if you do. First Samuel 5.23 says, For rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft. And your rebellion and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou have rejected the clear word of God. He has also rejected thee. Are you going to be rejected because of your stubbornness? Well, Mary, Susie, this one doesn't... Think, but, but you're going to go to hell. I'm going to finish here, Proverbs 31, 30. Listen closely and read all of Proverbs 31, of course, especially verse 10 on. Uh, of course, that's about a Proverbs 31 woman. It's beautiful. Listen, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Vanity is sin. But a woman fears the Lord. She shall be praised. You better start fearing the Lord. Proverbs 9, 10 says, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. See, most of you don't feel the Lord. Oh, you profess holiness and you give money here and you do this and you go, nah, no, no, no. You need to obey him in every area. You need to obey his word from head to toe. Be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, says Matthew 5, 48. Okay, I'm not going to go on anymore. Praise the Lord, we got this in under 30 minutes. Warning against the adulteresses in chapter 7 of Proverbs. Are you going to live holy? Or are you going to think this that we just went over, these Bible verses sound foolish to you. If they do, remember the preaching of the cross is foolish to them that are perishing. Jesus is Lord and listen, you must obey him and then endure till the end to be saved.